humans have long been drawn to the sea. The ocean is a magnet for those wishing to explore the most incredible realm on planet Earth, rich with beauty, wonder and adventure. Humans love to be in, on or just inside of the sea. But the human-ocean relationship is bittersweet. For centuries, the oceans have been used as a dump for human debris. Since the 1960s, post-consumer plastic products have become the most common and persistent pollutants in the world's oceans. Plastics are lightweight, durable and cost-effective. Plastics can be fabricated into almost anything. Lamentably, these same properties pose a serious hazard to ecosystems. It has been said that plastics, like diamonds, are forever. Plastics are the fastest growing segment of the watershed waste stream, creating serious and deadly impacts on marine creatures and food webs. The world ocean is becoming an artificial environment, more like a synthetic sea. Research over the past decade has provided a way to quantify the proliferation. Scientific trawls in the Northeast Pacific Gyre in 1999 by the Algalita Marine Research Foundation revealed that drifting plastic particles outweighed available zooplankton in the ocean by a factor of nearly six to one, as demonstrated by this surface trawl sample. However, this baseline was established 10 years ago. So what are the concentrations now? Scientific trawls by Al Galita in 2008 recorded an average of about 46 pounds of plastic to just one of zooplankton in the region known as the Northeast Pacific Gyre. This exponential increase is demonstrated by the sample choked with plastic fragments. There is so much trash in this region that Captain Moore is concerned for the safety of the crew and his vessel. The whole area is a disgusting plastic cesspool and the area near Hawaii and the Eastern Garbage Patch is so polluted that I can't go back there. It's a hazard to navigation. We had to four times in the middle of the night go over and cut away big balls of net from our props. The prop was wrapped at high speed by all this netting, it thrust the drive shaft forward and thrust the whole motor forward an inch into the cover for the belts. I can't subject the crew uh, to the risk of collision or the risk of uh, disabling the vessel and that will be my last trip. It's just uh, too polluted now for navigation of a boat uh, in the area of the eastern garbage patch. As you can see in the 2008 sample, the plastic recovered has been reduced to severely degraded chips due to photodegradation and loss of plasticizers like bisphenol A. The plastic becomes brittle and breaks down over time. Plastics are scientifically proven to sorb pollutants like DDT and PCBs up to one million times the concentration in surrounding waters, creating toxic synthetic drifters. As it breaks down, plastic trash can be confused for food by sea creatures due to its size, shape and colour. Since plastic chips on Hawaiian shorelines are mostly blue, black and clear chips, Researchers believe that much of the red and yellow particles have been eaten by fish, birds and turtles, thus contaminating the ocean's food chain. When we look at the gyre samples collected over time, the lack of warm coloured chips is obvious. What we see are more white, blue, green and black chips, all severely degraded. Consuming toxic plastic is believed to create endocrine disruption that impacts gender, whereby males become more feminine and cannot produce sperm, and females lose the ability to produce eggs.
Since more than half of plastic debris sinks, the seafloor becomes impacted as well. Mostly unseen bottom debris can smother seafloor habitats and restrict gas exchange from the bottom to the water column. The problem is not restricted to post-consumer products and packaging. There are feedstock or pre-production polymers shaped like pearls. They escape factories and are carried by the watershed into rivers and eventually into the ocean. These tend to resemble eggs, complete with a yolk-looking interior, and are consumed by sea creatures. Today, plastic dust is also employed in synthetic products. These dust particles also escape factories and are so small that ocean organisms absorb them just by swimming through the water column. The smaller the fragments, the fewer of them are found, indicating that filter feeders had collected them. Do zooplankton consume tiny plastic particles? Studies are needed to determine if synthetic dust is becoming bioavailable to zooplankton. If so, Synthetic dust could severely impact the very foundation of the ocean's food web. Marine debris alters behaviour in the world ocean. In Indonesia, carrier crabs have long used sea urchins for protection as they forage at night. Now plastic cups are being employed instead of sea urchins. Sea urchins have also made the transition using plastic for shelter. Here we see an octopus that has occupied a discarded plastic shower head. He takes it with him when he travels. Humans need to consider controlling their waste stream. Nets in rivers can help sequester trash from escaping into the sea. New storm drain inserts control urban runoff and hold back urban trash. Securing trash cans is also vital. In other countries, there are grassroots approaches to controlling marine debris. In Sulawesi, Indonesia dive operators have a hotline where marine debris is reported and scooped up by a catamaran equipped with a debris retrieval system. The plastic is removed and the natural debris returned to the sea. Concerned divers are also active in removing trash they encounter. Here we see the effects of plastic on coral reefs. Plastics can smother and kill coral. Plastic floating at or near the surface is part of a drifting surface ecosystem called a windrow. Here you can make out concentrations of zooplankton, drifting jellies and tinafores mixing with marine debris and plastic chips. You can see herring schools feeding and observe how the drifting debris zones attract all manner of foragers. These drift zones used to be natural but over time have become increasingly infused with synthetics. Drifting containers can transport marine life over wide stretches of ocean. Drifting sargassum is home to juvenile fish, attracting even more predators. Over the eons of millennia, foraging sea creatures have been using these windrows for nutrition, but now these debris zones contain toxic accumulations of plastic Due to the long life of polymers in the marine environment, it is vital that humans address the litter problem locally, nationally, and internationally. Really disgusting plastic cesspool uh, that uh, has to be uh, burned into the consciousness of humanity that the ocean is now a plastic wasteland.